Okay, so the time has come to talk about something that has been always a source of uh, pain, a source of anxiety, uh, this desire to find a partner, to find love. Because I've been for the last 10 years without a partner and, and I've been suffering a lot for this. Um, and I've been looking for a partner but never really finding the right person and I've been suffering a lot in my relationships because I've always been relating mostly, I mean, I've always had relationships with men. Although I'm now open to, to women as well because, yeah, why not? I mean, <laughs> I'm just looking for a human being who wants to be my companion, my life companion. And, and not only my life companion, but also my activist companion. And my, well, I really want, because the thing is that other companions that I had, my previous partners, were judging me all the time, didn't understand my work, didn't understand my philosophy, and, and were envious or whatever. It's true that back then perhaps my method and what I have built was not solid enough and in the last 10 years it's been really useful to be on my own in order to put my full attention on my work, on my PhD, on my research, on my method and on myself because the main aim was to really go into introspection and, and learn to love myself more and more and empower myself more and more. And um, so, but now that lately, um, since February 14, the date in which my, I passed the VIVA examination for my PhD and therefore I am about to become a doctor officially very soon, this really made a big change in my identity and it was just before the, the pandemic and it it really made my 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 period of the pandemic in the sense that I, I have been happier than I've ever been. Why? Because suddenly the PhD meant, without having a degree actually, it meant that I was uh, that that I was recognized by a very important institution and, and I, I was given value, my work was valuable valuable and it, it, it got the highest um, the highest mark so to speak and and this really made me change because in the past I've always lived the world as hostile and it the PhD meant the world is not hostile anymore and and therefore I could actually blossom and so I have used the pandemic to to uh, to become an activist, which was something that I always wanted to do and that I didn't have sort of the guts to do this and therefore I placed my studio. Well, this is something that I've said in other videos anyway. So, so this has happened in a moment in which I was at last beginning to feel really good about myself and really loving myself and giving value to myself and really enjoying life and and therefore, it's now that I can really say, okay, I'm looking for a partner because I know exactly what I want. Okay, of course, life gives you something different. Yeah, you, you, it's like with children, you cannot, you know, expect something specific. But at the same time, I just don't want to be with people who judge me. I don't want to be with people who don't understand my work. I don't want to be with people who who uh, don't know themselves enough in order to, to, to make the, the uh, power dynamics of the relationship completely transparent um, and, and perhaps laugh about it. You know? So I think it would be, I just aim for the best and the best for me would be somebody who is able and who is willing to evolve and that's the maximum priority and that they can uh, really uh, look at all the dy power dynamics that they uh, put into place in relationships and they are able and willing to, 
to look at them and to and to work on them and to be transparent about their their power aims and power dynamics and that is amazing and that is really something for our evolution both uh, as a couple but also individually i mean evolving means and actually i discovered this during my phd evolving means that you that you can really um, uh, um, recognize how you use power and 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 to make it uh, sort of sustainable and make it also politically correct not correct but politically interesting that is to subvert continuously the roles of power so in a relationship power dynamics should be complete constantly subverted uh, and that can be an, ama an amazing relationship and this is the relationship I want and this is the relationship that I actually can uh, go into right now and it would be fantastic for my evolution because I've been for 10 years on my own and right now I'm really ready for uh, the challenge of a relationship but a relationship in which all my knowledge, I can use all my knowledge and I'm not going to be the teacher in the relationship but we can both exchange this uh, interest in the power dynamics in order to evolve together, to grow old together, to be activists together, to change the world together. This is what I want. So this morning I had this, uh, because every morning I go out to walk the dogs in the woods and I always walk the dogs with a guy who is like 46 and who is quite good. I mean, he's quite simple and, and culture very different from me and culturally, culturally wise. Um, um, and I liked him. And, um, and for a long time, I mean, we've been talking and talking and talking and uh, I, didn't, I didn't dare to say I like you. And I kept on trying, but I didn't dare because I was afraid to be rejected. And, um, but today, I, I told him, I like you. But it didn't work out well. I mean, I was hoping that he would want to kiss me, but he didn't. And um, so probably he does not like me. And he said, well, I like you uh, as, a, as a person, as a friend, and so on. So he was like saying no, although when I said, well, I'm not talking about liking somebody as a friend or as a person, but I'm talking about attraction. And he said, well, I'm a disaster. So perhaps he's thinking that uh, because he knows a little bit that I'm an artist and uh, about my work and so on, uh, he might feel a bit like comparing himself or something. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm happy that I managed to say this and I didn't get depressed because I was rejected or was I rejected? I'm not sure. And But the good thing is that I have managed to do this once I had shaven my head because shaving my head makes me stronger, feel more beautiful, more sexy, more myself. I don't know, more... There's something in my shaving my head that it's like finding myself again, finding my my essence, there's something there. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure what it is because it might have many philosophical and historical um, references. Um, I'm sure of that. I mean, two of my sisters died of cancer. Um, I, I did a book on the Holocaust. Um, I went to Korea and I met these uh, Buddhist nuns. Um, I don't know. There are many, many and also I did it because I want to be seen, I want to be looked at, I want to be different, I want to show that I'm different. Anyhow, it just made me stronger. So right now I'm not feeling rejected really. I'm not feeling bad about this. I'm just feeling, well, he's not the man of my life and that's all. And, and perhaps this is going to help me to, to be more focused on what I really want as a partner, who I really want as a partner. So if you see this video, um, if you want to divulge it, please, if you know somebody that could be interested, that could be the person that I'm looking for, um, thank you for sharing it. And please subscribe so I can, uh, yeah, 
I didn't want to say please subscribe, but please subscribe, yeah. Thanks.